This next control position is the knee on belly. Now, Bogdan, all you're gonna do is try and hold this position. Gina, all you're gonna try and do is escape. Good luck, boys. Okay, good. And we start again. Start again. Okay, so a problem and something you're doing really well is you're lifting his foot. Okay, so you're in this position here, and the way he's dealing with it is by coming underneath your foot. So you're trying to hold here, and he's pushing his foot up, and then you're ha having to bring your other leg in here to try and stop him from clamping down on your half guard. So what I would definitely try and do here is, is sometimes I try and remove this space. So let's say before I start, sometimes I'll go right across the, the distance. So I'm going to show camera here. Can we turn it this way a little bit? And just move your arm. So instead of being here, I have plenty of room in this area here. I'll try and bring it right across here. So now it's just a little harder for him to get underneath. You see that? And as he starts trying to get underneath, what I can start doing is coming out of the arm and I can block this. And then suddenly I'm doing the same thing while I'm doing the hand control. Sorry if I'm a little heavy on you. Yeah, so if you're starting trying to escape now, you start moving around, I'm also making it hard because I'm also controlling the hands. And it's not super hard, I just try and redirect them. So as he tries to reach my leg, I just pull it up. Mm -hmm. You know, and he goes back again, does it again. You just start just defending, do what you want. And I'm just redirecting it. It's not like I'm holding it really tight. I'm just redirecting. He goes to my leg, a little pull. That's it. He pushes that, it's a little pull. Push back. And just keep moving him around. It's a lot easier to hold this position. So let's go back this way a little bit. You stay where you are. Here, here, here. And I want, mm -hmm. I want you to try that. Try and take away the space first. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and control the hands. Mm -hmm. Okay, three, two, one, go. Didn't quite work. Let's go back again. Okay, go back again. What I want you to do is I want you to control the wrists. Mm -hmm. Grab his hand, grab his wrists like we did earlier, mm -hmm. and don't let him, don't let him move you around. Okay, okay go it. from there. Nice, he was able to hit escape away, which is good. Okay, we can start again, let's go back in. So now we need to deal with, okay, we're doing really well with locking the hands, but now we need to make sure that he can't hip escape as well. Mm -hmm. I want you to follow him when he hip escapes. Mm -hmm. And it's a game you can play. We can create another game off of this, another task-based game, where basically I'm just gonna move you my way a little bit, drag my way, is where I would have, and just all I want you to do is hip escape, okay? And as he hip escapes, I move with him. You go to hip escape again, I move with him. And go, go for a really big hip escape, I go with him. Okay? Mm. So that would just be like a game. And I wouldn't have him push me away or anything. I would just have him just hip escape. Mm -hmm. And you've just got to follow him. Follow him, follow him, follow him. So let's play that for one second, okay? Come back this way. And uh, go to knee right. And all you're going to do, Gian, is just hip escape. Not try and push him away, just try and hip escape off the ground. And you're going to try and follow him. That's all, okay? Mm -hmm. Go. Good. And you see like, you're getting, mm -hmm. your balance just needs to get a bit more mm -hmm. experience. There we go, it starts becoming a little bit better. Mm -hmm. And that can be another exercise. It's going to be horrible for the person underneath, mm -hmm. but it's something that you have to get used to. Because if you don't know how to follow someone, they're going to hip escape really quickly, make space, mm -hmm. and then you'll start. So two things that we can improve on with your knee ride, three things. We move the knee further across, so there's no space in between mm -hmm. the top of my foot and his hip. Mm -hmm. We control the arms so we can't keep scooping up your legs. And we learn to go with him. As he hip escapes, we move with him. You move with him. Mm -hmm. Okay? And it's not easy to do. It's something that takes a little bit of time. But if you start implementing those, you're going to have a little bit better. So let's go for one more and try and focus on those three things mm -hmm. and see how you go. Okay. Come back a little bit this way if you can, guys. Mm -hmm. It's great. That looks so much better already. Look, look how much more comfortable 
Yes. He looks and I'm sure he feels more comfortable. Great, great, good, good stuff. Oh, I like this. Makes a big difference, doesn't it? Yeah. And like I said, this is like, this is just a, shows how important this kind of training is. Because within three or four minutes, you figured out so many things that make it so much better. You're so much more effective. You use far less energy, and it's much more horrible for the person underneath because they can't just do what they want to do. So that's why I like to do these positions, keep seeing the holes in our game, figure out can we create maybe another uh, task-based game inside of that to help us develop, like the balance one. And then once we add that to the other one, then it just makes it so much better. So that's good. One question. Yep. Let's say this, like, right? Like, we have you in the corner who can guide us uh, for the moves, like, you know, you have to, if like, let's say people, they don't have somebody in the corner and they cannot see from the side how they can get to that point. Exact same thing, but what they have to do is experiment a little bit more. So for, for me, it's much easier because I've done this. So I, I can see the little things. I can almost, I'm at the stage now, if someone can call me and say, hey, I'm having a problem with knee ride, this is happening. And I can say, okay, most likely it's gonna be one, two or three. But at first, what I'd have to do is I'd experiment. So I would try different things. I would try and move my knee further back. I would try and meet, move my knee further forward. And I'd be very like open and honest and vulnerable in a sense to ask my opponents, like, you know, how does this feel? Is this any good? Does this make it worse? Does this make it better? I remember me and Craig training years ago. I would come in and Craig would be in a position with some kind of fucking stupid leg entanglement. And he'd be like, Kit, what do you think of this? What do you think of this? How does this feel? You know, it's just, you just ask for feedback and then you will slowly start getting better and better. But you're going to have to treat it like an experiment where you're going to have to, you might have to try 10 different things before you find one that works. But ultimately that's the best way to learn because then you know those other nine things don't work yeah. or at least why they don't work. And sometimes the case is everything can work at specific times, but things, you know, but every single thing you do can be counted. You know, nothing is foolproof. And that's the fun thing about jujitsu. Yeah. Every single position can be escaped and every single submission can be escaped and defended. It's more about knowing how someone's going to try and defend you and try and escape, understanding that, and then preventing those as well as what you're doing. So it becomes, you end up being able to focus on multiple different variables that you already understand. But without this kind of training, you're never gonna get there. You're just gonna be someone that knows techniques from positions but has no real understanding of why they're doing what they're doing. Does that make sense? 